for the 10th episode of Creepy, we bring to you one of the oldest and longest creepy pastas. As such, it's been broken down into 10 parts based on the individual journal entries. Each part is presented by the Audio Drama Production Podcast. Learn more about them at audiodramaproduction.com or on Twitter at YAPAudio. I now present to you Ted the Caver. This is Creepy, a podcast dedicated to sharing the most famous, chilling, and disturbing creepy pastas and urban legends in the world. Whether these stories truly happened or are simply fabrications is for you to decide. These stories may contain graphic depictions of violence and explicit language. Listener discretion is advised. Ted the Caver. Due to the overwhelming number of requests I've received to tell about my discoveries and bizarre experiences in a cave not far from my home, I've created this webpage, angelfire.com slash trek slash caver. I'll outline the events that happened to me during the past few months beginning with my journey into a familiar cave in December 2000 and ending, well, it hasn't actually ended yet. I will use my caving journal as a text to tell about my recent experience. I will give them to you as I experience them in chronological order. I've included photographs that were taken during my many trips into the cave. I've also created a few illustrations to help you get a better idea of what things look like in the cave. All of the photos were taken by me, or one of the few people I went into the cave with. I want to point out a few things before I tell about the events. 1. Most of the pictures were taken with a Kodak disposable type camera. I took a better camera into the cave on one or two of the trips. Pictures on this site are all original photos and have not been messed with or enhanced other than where noted. As a rule, I get my pictures put onto a disc at the time of developing so I don't have to scan them later. This ensures the best digital quality. 2. I will not reveal the names of the other people involved in this experience. If you know me well enough, you probably know them already. 3. I will not reveal the location of the cave to anyone for any reason. So please don't ask. I refuse to be held accountable for anyone's life but my own. I will refer to the cave as Mystery Cave. That is not its real name. If you think these events sound far-fetched, I agree. I would come to the same conclusion had I not experienced them. I will try to finish the site as soon as possible. Check the date on the main page to see when I've made updates. To protect myself from people who might want to copy this site, I include the following. All text on this and following pages are my own words and copyright 2001. Ted. I will divide the story into two types of recording for the sake of clarity. The regular recording is taken directly from my caving journal. The voiceover with underscore and audio changes is my comment as I reflect on the experience. I will do my best to convey the thoughts and feelings I had during the entire event. I will not use the actual names of the other individuals involved. I will include the entire relevant text in my journal. Only small parts of the journal will I skip. This will only occur when the entry has nothing to do with the experience in the cave, such as eating dinner after a trip, getting fuel or snacks, irrelevant details, etc. My journal is fairly thorough. I will merely summarize what I'm cutting out of the actual entry. In an effort to present this experience in as accurate light as possible, I will record my journal as I wrote it, sans grammar check. Please overlook my errors. My additional comments will help to clarify the things I wrote in my journal. Caving Journal, 12-30-2000. B and I decided to get into one more caving trip before the new year. 
So we set our sights on Mystery Cave. Not a spectacular cave, but since neither of us have been caving in a while, it'd be nice to go into any cave. There was a bit of an excitement to this trip. There was a small passage in the lower portion of the cave that I wanted to check out to see if it was possible to get past it. It had a small opening, but lots of air blowing out of it. Even though it's way too small to climb through, I'd never even checked to see what was inside the passage. We got our gear loaded up and hit the road by 3 p.m. We got to the cave in great time since B likes to drive fast. We anchored from the usual tree and began to rappel into the cave. I went down first and got my gear together while B came down. I will refer to B many times. We've been caving together for many months now. He was injured in a caving accident a few years ago and was told he would never walk again. Through hard work and perseverance, he not only walks but can get around very well in caves. The trickier part of a cave might slow him down a bit, but he can make it. He patiently works through an obstacle until he gets past it. As for the reference to the small opening in the cave, there's a saying among cavers. If it blows, it goes. Meaning, if a passage has a good flow of air, it's probably worth investigating. After we explored all the usual passages, we climbed down to check out the hole. The hole is located deep in the cave, near the lowest part of the cave. It's on the side of a cave wall about three feet from the floor. To look inside the hole, I had to kneel down and duck under an overhang of rock. I used my backup mini mag light and held it inside the hole to see what I could see. I was excited by what I saw. The wall around the hole was about three to five inches thick. It led into a tight passage. The passage opened up a bit just inside the hole. It continued back about 10, 12 feet into a small crawl space. After that, it seemed to really open up. Although how much, we couldn't tell. This could be a virgin passage. Obviously no one has passed through this road, but there could be a way into the passage from the other side. To even get to the crawl space, we would have to enlarge the opening. Currently it's about the size of my fist. Once we get past the opening, we would have a tight crawl back to where it opened up. It would take some work, but we thought we could do it. We sat down for a few minutes to rest and contemplate our plan of attack. While we sat there in the darkness, we could hear the wind howl from the other side of the passage. It was a low, eerie noise. We could also hear a low rumble from time to time. No big deal though. The cave's in the vicinity of a highway that has heavy trucks drive on it. We figured the rumble was the effect of the trucks resonating through the rocks. We determined that our best plan would be to haul a cordless drill into the cave to drill into the rock. Then we could take a bullpen and a small sledgehammer and break up the rock. It seemed pretty straightforward. We would widen the hole big enough to squeeze in and see what was on the other side. The effort to haul the equipment down to the hole would be a pain, but we hoped it would be worth it. I named the passage Floyd's Tomb, after Floyd Collins. It seemed to look like the tight spot where Floyd spent his last miserable days on Earth. Floyd Collins was a caver back in the early 1900s. He got stuck in a tight crawl space and was unable to free himself. It is an amazing story that is detailed in a book called Trapped, the Story of Floyd Collins. I think that was the title, I don't recall the author. Calling our passage Floyd's tomb was not only a tribute to Floyd, but a commentary of the size of the passage. <laughs> In retrospect, it is funny how simple I thought it was going to be. I figured a few hours of work and we'd be in. Had I known how long it was going to take, I doubt I would have even begun the project. Had I known what I was going to experience in the cave, I never would have returned. We gathered up our gear and headed for the surface. Normally I couldn't care less if I ever came back into this cave. There was nothing special about it. 
but now I was psyched about getting back and getting through. We hadn't even left the cave when we were planning our return trip. The rest of the journal entry talked about the climb out of the cave, our dinner, and our trip back home. For more information, including pictures and videos of the stories told on this podcast, or to suggest stories for future episodes, please visit us at CreepyPod on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Or email us at CreepyPod at gmail.com. All stories told on this podcast can be found at creepypastawikia.com and are protected by a Creative Commons license. Some rights reserved unless otherwise stated.